so far what we've been looking at is if we're given a data set, we've been trying to summarize the data set using numbers. And we talked about measures of central value, like the mean and the median. We've talked about um, measures of range, like the standard deviation and uh, the interquartile range that give us an idea of how spread out the data points are. In this case here, what we're going to be looking at is uh, some ways to graphically represent data sets. And when we're looking at numerical data sets like this one, where we have a list of ages, one of the most common ways to display our data is using something called a histogram. A histogram is a special type of bar chart. And some of the qualities that our bar chart has that are a little bit different is that the bottom axis always has to be a number line representing our data. So in this case, we want a number line that's showing our ages and that's going to go here in between, uh, make sure, making sure that we include values between 17 and 78. The uh, left side axis is going to represent the frequency or the number of times that range of data occurs in the data set. So let's take a look at what that would look like here for our Nobel Peace Prize winners. If we wanted to have our bottom axis just be a number line counting by one, for example, one, two, three, four, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, right? This would be a pretty boring um, histogram and it would be very spread out because our data points are so spread out. So rather than having you know a single bar for everything except for 63 where there's a uh, three pieces of data. What we want to try to do is put them into grouping so we can get a quick visual look about what the data is, how spread out it is, and get different types of pieces of information from that graph. In order to do that, one thing that the first thing that you really want to do is to try to decide how to break up those numbers. Um, each of these categories are what we call bins when we're looking at um, how to organize our data set. And in this case, I've decided to make my bins of size 10. We need to make sure that we have equally sized bins. Being represented. Now, if I counted by fives, I'd have a lot of categories, right? You can do that. Here, I decided to count by tens. This gives me about seven. Between five and seven bars is usually pretty good uh, representation. And you get to be the chooser of how this is going to be broken down. You want there to be enough bars to have some differentiation, but not so many bars that it's all spread out um, without giving you any meaningful types of groupings. So I decided I wanted to go uh, count by tens because my lowest number was 17, my highest number was 78. So I need to make sure that I have bins that will include all of those values here. Now, as I go through, between 10 and 20, notice that 17 shows up there one time. We're going to call this our frequency. 25, between 20 and 30, we have one person in that data range. And between 30 and 40, we have two people. Between 40 and 50, we have two people in that set. And then between 50 and 60, we have one, two, three. Now here we have 60. Uh, so does 60 go in the first category or in the second category? Typically what we do is we call it binning up. So that means if you're right on a borderline like this one, you put it in the higher up bin. That's why I've underlined these. I want to include 60, 50 and take everything up to 60, but not including 60. So in this case, I have one, two, three people that fit into that category, and the 60 is going to bin up into this next category here. So how many do I have in their 60s here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven different people in that category. And then in their 70s, 
I had one, two, three, and four people in that category. If you add this up, you should get the total number of um, data points in your set. So 11, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and all 20 of my values were represented here. Once I have categories, let's go ahead and take a look at what this graph would look like as we go through. So our most important piece of information when we're drawing a histogram here is that our bottom axis represents um, a number line. So in this case, I'm going to just go ahead and count by tens. You can have like a break in the graph. Like if you're starting at 100, maybe you want to have those. Uh, be, but once you start counting, it may, they need to be equally spaced. So I'm going to go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, and 80. I need to make sure that I go all the way out here. Now, within each of these bins, I'm going to go up and represent the frequency here. So this would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And make sure you have enough height there for each of those. And then your bar is just going to go between our category bins here. So between 1 and 20, or between 10 and 20, there was one person. Between 20 and 30, there were one person. Between 30 and 40, there were two people. Between 40 and 50, there were also two people. Between 50 and 60, we went up to three. But between 60 and 70, we had a total of seven people in that category. And then from 70 to 80, we had four. And so what we get here is this graph. You can see that left-hand skew to our data that we were talking about before, where our high point is showing up here, but the left is like pulled down because we had some of those um, younger values along that way. And you can kind of see that it pulls that left side out farther, um, which is kind of a neat way to look at it. As always, we like to have labels representing our values. So this down here is going to be the ages of our prize winners. And the height is going to be our number of prize winners in that category. So this becomes our frequency. And these down here represent our data points. Now, something interesting to note as we're looking at something at a graph like this, in this case, do notice that our bars touch each other. That's one of our special things that happen when we're looking at histograms. We don't have spaces between them because we don't have gaps in, the, in our counting for our number lines. Sometimes you can have um, holes in the graph are okay. if there's a space where there's no representation. So here we had somebody represented in each of those categories. So we didn't have any holes in the graph. But let's say that we didn't have the 25 year old. Then the graph would look like this and there would be a gap in the graph because there was nothing represented in that, in that space between 20 and 30. But we did have one, so we, we don't have any holes in the graph, okay, or being represented here. Notice that our frequency here, if we add the heights of all the graphs, we should get the total number of data points. All right, just like we added our frequency from our table up here to be 20, we could add the heights here because they're those same numbers, 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 3 plus 7 plus 4, and we'd get our 20 data points represented. So that becomes another uh, cool piece of information that we can get from this. Notice that one thing that we lose is we lose the actual data values. When in a histogram.
because here what we end up is we're looking at ranges of data and how many things fall into each one of those categories. So I can't look at this and tell you how many people were aged 63. All I can do is look and tell you that there were seven people that were aged somewhere between 60 and 70, but I'm not really sure where. If I wanted to ask you, um, for example, how many people were 50 or older, we could just 50 starts my bar here and I can add those up because I can add this bar and this bar and this bar. So I'd have three plus seven plus four. So 50 years or older, three plus seven plus four would give me 14. So I get 14 people that are in this data range. If I want to know how many people were 55 or older, I can't tell from my data because I don't know where that 55 is. It's somewhere in the middle of this range. You can't tell. I know these seven and these four, but there might be some from the 50 to 60 category. I'm not really tell, or I'm not really able to tell by looking at that. So we lose this individual. Um, the individuality of the points, but we are able to very quickly give a very visual representation. So someone looking at this can be like, oh, most of our Nobel Prize winners were older or the majority of our Nobel Prize winners were in their 60s. And we can get that type of information very quickly from a histogram graph. Um, so this is the basic idea behind what those graphs are and how you can get information from the graph. Um, we'll be using technology to help us draw our graphs in the and we'll look at that in one of the future videos here. But this should help you be able to interpret, now that you kind of see how those are created, you can interpret what the meanings of this information is by looking at a graph, which will, should help you in your assignment.